going to resume where we left off in the previous video. I first want to mention that you can always return to the Voxel workspace to continue sculpting. And I should mention that if you use the live clay or subdivide brush to dynamically tessellate your model, then you get the dual benefit of having extra resolution for sculpting and texturing. If I zoom in and hit the W key to toggle wireframe on, you can see varying levels of tessellation on this model. The subdivide brush allows me just to basically brush select a certain area or I can use any one of these selection tools. Select that area and it will apply loop subdivision so it works really well with extremely fine details. Uh, live clay is another option as well. You can dynamically tessellate on the fly. So any areas where you know the camera is going to be focused in tight, uh, maybe the head area, then uh, you can go in with live clay and add some more tessellation. So in some regards this is very similar to working with PTEX because it's essentially that's what PTEX does. It, it takes the polygons you have on a model, uh, generally a lower polygon model, and uh, it essentially gives each one of those an assignment in a UV space and so whenever you paint select an area it will scale those up when you choose to uh, increase the resolution. So it scales it up for you and it does it kind of in a seamless fashion. You never have to really visit the UV workspace. You can just continue working in a certain area, paint select an area to in increase the resolution if you need it, and uh, continue working. And so you have the same effect here. I can go in and give myself more resolution in areas where I know I need it, like this. Okay, I can reduce the brush size. And it tessellates even more under the brush. Or I can stay with a large brush and just crank the detail amount here. I can scrub it with the uh, slider or enter the value numerically. Oops. I'm going to skip forward in this recording just a bit. Okay, so I can go back to the paint room. And I'll choose color create a new layer and I want to point out one last thing uh, before I finish here is let's say let me actually go in and I'm gonna just delete all that on that layer If you're going to use the fill tool where you can apply kind of procedural noise types and you can even uh, create a custom map to use, and I can select a texture to use. I'll choose something like that. I can now if I'm texture matte painting, I have the option to use this bump texture, but with vertex painting I don't. But I can scale the size of that, basically that tiled texture. I can go above 10 if I need. Modify the minutes of dropping. The edge contrast. Modulate color, so it's going to adopt the color that I have here. But I could change that up with these colors. Let's go with a bright orange, maybe. Maybe a bit darker, darker red. Can I adjust the opacity of it? 
And if I'm happy with that, turn off color tolerance, hit layer. And there you go. And this serves as a good example to show you that areas where you have low polygonal density on your model, you likewise get low resolution on your texture. So just keep that in mind. So once again, I want to mention that once you're done with your vertex painting, if you want to bake everything down to a low polygon retopo mesh, at that point you could resume texture painting on image maps that are UV based. So I hope these tips help and thank you for watching.